Hi, it's Douglas Lucky Larson, and today we're talking about a dog bite, a total Karen, and how to tell if you are a caged cat or a wild beast. <laughs> so, I have rarely met an HOA that I didn't despise. Underfunded reserves, special assessments, design review boards, and landscape police. All of these have left a bad taste in my mouth with various homes and condos that I've owned. Why do these organizations even exist? Well, if you've ever been in an HOA community, then you'll probably notice that things look nice. <laughs> there are no Budweiser towels in people's windows because they didn't want to buy curtains. There are no cars up on blocks in driveways. There are no out-of-control yards with knee-high weeds. However, this beauty and uniformity comes with a price. And that price is a piece of your freedom. If you don't comply, they will fine you. And they can even put a lien on your property. The other price is literally a monthly price. Some HOA communities charge only a nominal amount, maybe a hundred bucks. And others can be three or four or five hundred bucks or more depending on amenities and exclusiveness. In 2012, I was working on a home in a gated coastal community in San Diego County, and I was butting heads with an HOA president. <sighs> now, this is the actual property here, um, although when I purchased it, and even when I sold it, it was not worth $1.3 million, if you believe the Redfin estimate. <laughs> it was a beautiful home in a nice community in Encinitas, and uh, I did some things to it to make it even nicer. But um, here was the problem, was I wanted to speak to the manager and the manager was Karen. <laughs> she was nosy, demanding, and she over scrutinized every little repair that I wanted to make to the neglected, formerly bank owned property. Now, first it was the roof when a couple contractors stopped by to measure and give me bids. Then it was the new vinyl windows and even a gate repair and basic landscaping. Every de detail, she said, had to be submitted on paper to the Architectural Design Committee, which was her and two other officers, which met only on the third Thursday of each month. She then told me in one conversation that I don't know where you come from, but you can't just do whatever you want here. <sighs> well, I had grown up my whole life in that basic area, but I wasn't familiar with this kind of overbearing scrutiny. So what if you actually do need to speak to the manager, but she's Karen? The immediate neighbors were sympathetic to my cause. They, they loved the improvements that I was trying to make, and they knew that it had been kind of a neglected and blighted home. But uh, it's not like that, you know, they were ready to get out their pitchforks and march with me with torches to kill the monster. Nope. However, one fateful evening, a miracle happened. The HOA president was walking her dog in my little cul-de-sac. And as I went out to greet her, her little canine friend pulled loose of his leash and bit me on the shin. The little teeth went through my jeans and left four nice bleeding puncture wounds. <laughs> well, suddenly the HOA president transformed from the community dictator into my best buddy. She stopped by that very night with a card and a gift of candied almonds. Yeah. Not only was she very apologetic about her aggressive furry friend, but she became my ally all of a sudden in fast-tracking my exterior improvements. Now, I never have been much of a pet person, except for the chameleon that I kept as a kid, but I learned that even a vicious dog can truly be an investor's best friend. Let's face it, she, she, if she wanted to, she could have been nice all along, but she chose not to be. She only became helpful when she thought that I might file a lawsuit against her and her unruly little pooch. Now, I learned from another neighbor that 
this little dog had bitten another neighbor's dog several months earlier. I'm sure that uh, the HOA president was afraid that her little Fido was going to puppy jail for sure, or worse. Now, I did not sue or file a complaint. I was just pleased to get my projects back on schedule. I took one for the team, and it was totally worth it. Now, there are many other lessons to be learned from this experience. First, it's a good reminder that a little power can go to someone's head and they can make your life miserable if that's their goal. Let's turn to the next slide. <clears throat> Another important lesson I learned is about freedom versus risk. There seem to be basically two kinds of people in this world. Some people prefer to live tucked away in a little gated HOA community where there is very little risk or diversity or sudden change or surprise. No maintenance issues that they're uh, not expecting. They would prefer to overpay in advance every single month for security and for repairs that may or may not be needed. They prefer uniformity and compliance and even unnecessary rules over their heads all the time for the sake of stability and safety. On the other hand, there are many people more like myself, who are willing to take a risk that, oh, who knows, maybe one eccentric neighbor might exercise his freedom to have ugly yard art, or a giant Trump flag in his yard, or maybe even a Black Lives Matter sign. And because of this, our property values might suffer just a little bit. But at least we don't have a tiny tyrant trying to micromanage our lives. Now, this whole HOA example is a bit of a metaphor for life. Many people today actually prefer and will pay extra in the form of taxes or fees or freedom to be micromanaged a bit because they prefer safety and security over all else. Now, others simply prefer freedom and we are willing to take a little more risk, risk outside of the gated community, risk that an unexpected event may interrupt our life momentarily, risk that a business venture might fail. Many of the social conflicts that we're seeing today are because people in the tidy, uniform, protected communities or political ideologies or belief systems want to impose their strict CCNRs on everyone outside their community. And they are convinced that if everyone else would just comply, well, we'd all be better off. But that's just not true. It's almost always the risk takers who create things because you usually have to fail like 10 times or maybe 100 to make something awesome. Of course, every society needs to have some rules and guidelines because you know what? Nobody wants a meth lab right next door or someone breeding man-eating alligators just over your back fence. Nope. Even the most freedom-loving radicals might start screaming for more rules if a registered pedophile moves in down the street. I think we can all agree that some rules are good. However, if, if I've chosen to live in the Amazon next to a piranha-filled river, that's my choice. If I have recovered from a certain uh, sickness within the last couple months and I don't want to get a certain medicine, that's my choice. If I have a rental property and I actually want to legally enforce the contract that requires a tenant to pay or move out, that should be my choice. It's called property rights for a reason. You can see a theme here that I really like rights and freedoms and choices. What about you? Would you prefer to be a lion, safely tucked away in an enclosure at the zoo, with plenty of food and no freedom? Or would you rather be a lion living in the wild, on the African plains, with all the freedom in the world, but no safety net? You eat what you kill, or you starve. Yes, those are extreme examples, but you get the drift. I really like what George Gammon has to say on this topic as he talks about standing up for freedom and liberty. He and many others 
have highlighted the absolute bizarre way that some countries like Australia are literally locking down their citizens and putting them in camps for even small infractions or possible exposures. It's crazy. How about New York City under Bill de Blasio? They have recently taken a turn for the worse regarding personal freedoms and choice. These things are crucial in preserving a satisfying life, personal liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are God-given rights that should be promoted and protected by our government. So, what can you do to preserve your freedom? Well, first, stand up when you see injustice. Be vocal when you see rights being trampled. Work hard toward getting out from under the control of powerful people, political tyrants, and media censorship. Diversify your income so that you are not under anyone else's thumb. Don't let anyone keep you down. Always remember that government leaders at all levels may promise solutions, but They usually owe favors to the special interest groups that got them elected, and their goals do not always align with yours. You need to look out for you and the others around you. And, hey, if you've got the time and the energy and the thick skin, you, maybe you, should run for office. Whether it's a school board or a city mayor or a state governorship, maybe you can be the kind of public servant that we actually do need. Now, I do not give advice, but hopefully this infotainment can be useful. Please like, subscribe, and share, and take a hard look at what's really going on around us, and decide if you want to be in a zoo or living free in the wild. I hope to see you on the next video.